Hey guys, Khalid from Cricket Fanatics magazine here, and today I'm bringing you a very special guest, Michael Holding. You would have heard his voice on plenty of commentary, and obviously West Indies legend. So, Michael, <laughs> I just wanted to start from the beginning of your career and just talk about some of the goals that you set for yourself when you were starting into your cricket career, and how it's changed since then. Well, to be honest, I never set myself goals. As a matter of fact, I didn't intend to be a professional cricketer. I played the game because I loved it and it just happened to be that I got good at it. Mm -hmm. Played for Jamaica, played for the West Indies. But then again, I could have easily stopped because I did stop in 1976 and I went to university. Okay. And then when World Series cricket came along and Packer came along, I went back to play cricket. If it hadn't been for Packer, I wouldn't have played cricket as long as I did. <laughs> so are there are aspects of that? of days of the cricket when you were younger or when you were growing up are there aspects of that that you would want to see in the modern day game well the game has changed so much yeah. you know there's so much emphasis now on the shorter form form of the game but at the same time what i would like to see is people still teaching the basics teach, still teaching youngsters the basics of the game so that when they do start playing the shorter form of the game that they can you know adapt to both yeah. you have a lot of youngsters now being taught how to, for instance, bat in the shortest form of the game. And then when they go to the longest form, if they choose to do that, yeah. they don't have to, they are unable to compete. They can't perform. They can't make the runs that they would make in the shortest form because they just haven't learned the basics properly. Yeah. And because of the longest format, you can see like a guy like Oli Pope will come in from into the team and play these expansive shots, different type of shots, and, and the patience has changed. You think that how important is patience to your game in the longer format? Well, if you're playing against the good bowlers, you're not going to get as many bad balls as you'd get in, in the shorter form. So it, it requires a bit more patience. It requires you to spend a bit more time at the crease. But someone like Oli Pope, you can see that he has learned the basics. Yes. Then he can start to experiment and do things like that. And you can see even in the, the long form of the game in test matches, he's still able to play some shots that you would see in the short form yeah. because he learned the basics properly. With regards to cricket, um, what sort of advice would you give to other aspiring cricketers out there that want to start their career now in this generation? Well, the only advice I would give them is to tell them that they need to, as I said, start from the basics. Learn the game properly, whether you're a batsman or a bowler. Learn all the basics so that later on you can then start to adapt to other forms of the game. It is very important that you do, even when you're doing any job, you learn the basics of the job first. Then you can start expanding and start doing other things yeah. as far as that job is concerned and other skills. If you're a doctor, you don't become a brain surgeon immediately. You learn to, be, to be, do the basics, you become a general practitioner, and then you can specialize in certain things. And that is the way I think you should approach the, ga the, the game cricket as well. Yeah. It's going to be hard work, but no one should shy away from hard work. Yeah. And with regards to your commentary, um, how did you get into it exactly? And what are your favorite parts about being behind the mic in front of the camera? Well, I got into commentary because a friend of mine in Jamaica actually forced me into commentary. <laughs> I started off in radio. He worked with a radio station and he was insistent that I should do some radio commentary. Eventually, I relented and, and started doing some radio. And then when television started in the Caribbean, I think the first time was 1991, I got invited to do television there as well. And from then, you know, I've just kept on growing. I've been doing commentary all different parts of the world. I wouldn't tell anyone that I enjoy being in front of the camera. <laughs> I enjoy being in the commentary box. I don't even particularly like when they turn on the come cam so that people at home can see me. I prefer to just be concentrating on the game, yeah. talking about the game. Yeah. But being on camera is not one of my favorite things. And you mentioned there that you travel all over the world. I mean, obviously, everybody always talks about wanting to go to the Caribbean and um, wanting to see the beautiful islands over there, etc. But what are some of your favorite spots to travel to? Well, I don't travel all over the world anymore, but I've been to almost every cricket playing country. I've worked in every cricket playing country. I've never done television commentary in New Zealand, for instance. Mm -hmm. But my favorite place where I was playing or doing commentary to go to was Australia, to be honest. Oh. I enjoyed going to Australia. You know, the lifestyle, the weather, the type of cricket usually being played down there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are so many other aspects of, no, I'm a commentator that I enjoy. 
I enjoy going and meeting people that I played with and against in years gone by because yeah. I made a lot of, in my opinion, great friendships when I was playing the game. So it's good to catch up with those people again. You know, in England, in Australia, here in South Africa, I never played against anybody here in South Africa, but I still catch up with friends that I have made from the first time I came. And I think that is the best part of it, catching up with friends. And this being a Cricket Fanatics channel for the fans, I had one question that I wanted to ask you, and it's about South Africa. Um, South Africa is really struggling to get back to that level that they used to be. What do, you, what, what do you think they should do to be able to get to that standard once again? Well, South, South Africa has struggled because of so many cricketers leaving to, to go and try to be cold pack players and play, play in, in England. A lot of good cricketers have left South Africa because of that. I think what South Africa needs to do is to go back to the basics, go back to grassroots, try and make the game available and accessible to as many people as possible. So a competition will start at that level mm -hmm. and then the cream will get to the top. Okay. I don't like the idea that you have to attend particular schools in this country to get mm. to, to represent the, the country. I think nine out of ten, that's the route. I would like to see more kids accessing the game without having to go to these special schools. Thank you a lot, Michael. This was an amazing conversation. Um, would you like to just give a message to the Cricket Fanatics fans out there? Well, keep on loving the game. You know, I think the four-day game, the five-day game is the best game in the world. Cricket, I think, is like life. And if you enjoy life, you should enjoy cricket. Thanks a lot, Michael. My Thank pleasure. You. <laughs>